Hey there, Julian from Emberstack here, and in this video, I'm gonna show you something super exciting, and that is usage-based billing in Memberstack. In this video, I'm going to use WISD to send the request, but if you're not using WISD, you can do it through a serverless function or probably some other stuff. If you want that, let me know in the comments. I'll make some more videos like that in the near future. So anyways, first things first, what we have here is we have our Stripe app open, we have our WISD app set up, and we've added member stack to it with the public key, very simple. And we have a simple Webflow site over here with member stack added and with a form. So the goal is that at the end, when someone fills out this form, it's gonna log that event in Stripe. And then if they've never, if they filled out the form less than a hundred times that month, it's not gonna charge them. If they filled out the form more than a hundred times, it's a dollar a month. So that is, you know, a weird pricing model, but it doesn't matter. I'm doing this for testing and I don't want it to charge the member stack company card. So anyways, with that being said, let's head into it now. First thing you're going to want to do is go into Stripe. And one important thing I need to mention while I am doing this is that this only works in live mode. This only works with Stripe live mode and member stack live mode. You cannot set this up in test mode. You cannot test it, unfortunately, in test mode at the moment. So I would probably recommend setting it up in a similar way to what I did, which is a very ridiculous pricing model that's not actually gonna charge your card at all. And then once you get it working, you can just switch it out with your actual pricing model. So anyways, now that I have that out of the way, here we are in Stripe. And the first thing you're gonna wanna do is go to the product catalog and go to meters. Then you're gonna to wanna to make a new meter. So let's just go ahead and call this test meter two. And let's leave this as is. There's some other options here. I'm not gonna get into them because I'm probably not the most knowledgeable in that subject. So let's go ahead and create our meter. Now we have that and the next thing we need to do is make an actual product. So let's go over to all products. Let's click add product and let's just do two test usage-based pricing. And then for our pricing, what we're gonna to wanna to do is click more pricing options for choose your pricing model. Let's go ahead and in this case do usage based. And then we have per unit, per package and per tier. So per unit is, let's say you have something like a job board and every time they post a job, you want it to charge them for that. You want it to log it in their account and charge at the end of the month. That's what that is. Per package is what Let's see actually per package just to make sure. Right, okay, so this is the same thing, but a package of, so let's say they need 10 and then they need another 10, so on and so forth. Same thing, but package based. And then per tier is what we're gonna do in this video. It's a super popular model and it's also super flexible. So what this is, it's kind of hard to explain. I'll just go ahead and show you. So first unit here, let's go ahead and do one to 100. And then per unit, we want it to be free and we don't want to charge them a flat fee. Then for this right here, we're doing 101 to infinity and we're going to set it to a flat fee of $1 and a per unit again of zero. Then what we could do, for example, we're not going to in this video is create more and more and more and more tiers. And we could, let's say, lower the cost per unit, drop the flat fee, whatever it may be, whatever we want to do. So let's leave this as is for now. Let's just enter again, zero and one in here, include tax and price. That's totally up to you. And then we want to choose the meter that we created. So there we go. Test meter two. And then monthly is fine. Obviously you can, you know, set this up however you want. You can have it bill them daily. You could do anything. It's all up to you. So anyway, let's go ahead and hit next, and then let's go ahead and add our product. So there we go. Now we can see this to test UBP. Let's click that. Let's copy the ID up there. And now let's head over into member stack and go to our plans. Now let's click these three dots up here and click import via Stripe. Then paste in that product ID like so and click confirm and import. So as we can see here, Stripe product was successfully imported. If you're getting an error saying it's not working, chances are it's that test mode thing I mentioned earlier. You need to be making a live mode Stripe product in a live paid member stack app to test this. Unfortunately, that's the way it is right now. So anyways, now we have this and we can go ahead and install this. So let's just click install and publish. Let's copy our ID over here and let's head on into Webflow and go to our signup form. 
So this is just for adding the plan, of course. Let's go to settings and let's put our new ID just like that. Now let's go ahead and hit publish. And then let's go back over into Stripe and see what we have to do next. So now we have the product, we have the meter, it's in member stack and we have installed it. So technically, in that case, we're done. Usage-based billing is set up, but unfortunately, as you'll see, that's not the case. So anyways, let's go ahead and just sign up and get our plan going in this. Let's hit sign up and then check member stack. Oh, right. Okay, we have to pay. So I'm going to fast forward this bit since I'm using real information here. All right, there we go. So now we have paid and here we are. Like I said, it's done. We now have everything that we need for usage-based billing set up on the site. If we go to our members, as we can see, this member here has this plan. So that's beautiful. Now it's the hard part. So the thing with usage-based billing is that, what is the usage? That's the hard question. And that's what makes this so, so, so difficult. That's probably why we don't have it yet as a native feature in the product, because we, it can be anything. It can be a form submission. It can be a page load. It can be someone using your script that you've created. It could be literally anything. And you need to define that. And in this phase, we get into the more developer-y stuff. So anyways, let's go ahead and actually set that up. Like I said, in this case, all we're trying to do is make it so that when they fill out that form, it's going to log that event. And then it'll charge them as I've set up in Stripe. So anyways, let's go back over to our product catalog in Stripe and let's go to our meter. So as we can see, we've got this little bit showing up right here. So this here as is listed is not exactly going to help us, but we can use parts of this in order to make whatever we need to make work, work. So anyways, let's go ahead and do that. So first things first, Let's go ahead and actually grab our secret key. So go over to developers in Stripe and you're going to need to get your API key. So just like that, click API keys, reveal live key, take it and head back into WSD. I've already done that step, so I'm not going to do it right here, but let's head into WSD. And then what you're going to want to do is go to your data store and add it as a secret. So as we can see here, I have Stripe API key. We're good to go. Don't show anyone that. Keep it a secret. As you can see, I'm doing. That is a very powerful key. So anyways, now that we've got that, let's go ahead and add a new app. And that is going to be Stripe. So let's just go ahead and call this Stripe API. And then let's select REST. And then for our base URL, we want to do return. And then in Stripe, we're going to want to grab this all the way up until this slash right here. Back on into Wiz. Yours is going to be the same. Yours shouldn't be different, but just grab it from Stripe. I don't know. I don't know if they're going to change their, their URL. So add that in, and now your app is created. There we go. Now we're going to want to go to requests, and here is the fun part. So let's go ahead and click new request, and let's just call this Stripe send event. And let's go ahead and select Stripe API. And then for a URL endpoint, we need to return the remainder of that little bit right there. So right here, V1 billing meter events. We don't need this forward slash here. So let's do that and we're good to go. Method, let's go ahead and select post. And then in our headers, what we're gonna wanna do is authorization. And then for value, we are going to want to do return and then do this right bearer and then a space. Then you're gonna to wanna to do plus, and then you're gonna to wanna to go to your data store and you're gonna to wanna to select that secret API key that you have created. The next thing you're gonna to wanna to do is set the content type and you're gonna to wanna to do return. There we go. So it is application slash x dash www dash form dash URL encoded. So keep that as is. And then what we're gonna to wanna to do, and this is something that was absolutely making me smash my face off the desk this morning is we're not actually going to want to put the data in the body. We want to put it in the URL parameters. That is weird. Thank you so much to Yasin from No Code Pro Code. Amazing guy, amazing content. I learned a lot of things about Wiz from him. I'm going to drop a link to his channel below. If you haven't seen it, you should definitely know who he is. 
and thanks to him, I know how to do this now. So let's go ahead and add our data. So the first thing that you're gonna to wanna to do is type in event name, just like that. And then for the value, you're gonna to wanna to do return, and then you're gonna to wanna to get that event name. So here, what we have is test meter two. We can also see it right there. I can just click to copy it. And I'm gonna paste it in like so. Then let's go ahead and do the next one. So again, back into here. Timestamp, we can just leave blank. It'll automatically do the current timestamp. And then let's copy this here. So payload, square bracket, stripe, customer ID. So let's go ahead and paste that in the next key. And then let's do return. And then we need to get something. So here we have a member stack get member event. All it is is, as you can see here, a request to member stack to get the current member and then an event that does that on page load. This is something that we do in pretty much every single WISD video. It's really important. It allows you to actually always have that member's data on hand. So that is what we have. And then let's go ahead and find our Stripe customer ID. There it is. So let's go ahead and do that. Make sure this is returning the Stripe customer ID, beautiful. And then we're gonna do payload value. And this is the amount of events that you wanna send. So in this case, we're only doing one because one form submission is one event. That's how we're charging them. But you can do some really, really cool things with this. Let's say another type of form costs more, let's say they're submitting like a featured post, then you can pass through two or three or a million or you know whatever it is that you want. And you have control over how many events you're sending based on the action. So that's really cool. But in this case, let's just do return one, just like that. And if we go ahead and review this, we have our endpoint looking good. We have our event name looking correct. We have our Stripe customer ID pulling like that from member stack. We have our value set to one. We have our authorization bit here properly set up and we have content type just to make sure this works. So, so that is everything for the event. Now we just need to make the actual event happen. So let's go into our actions and let's just call this Stripe submit form. I don't know, Stripe submit form. And let's go ahead and select our element. And we're gonna to wanna to select this form. In this case, we've added WISD attributes to it. You will need to do that too. And then we are going to do actions on event, submit. Let's go ahead and hit reset form. And we want to run, oh, sorry. I always get these ones confused. Then we need to perform our request stripe send event. Now that should be all done so let's go ahead we see that this has saved now let's go ahead and open this refresh i always like to refresh twice for good measure and let's just enter in some nonsense over here and let's hit submit there we go i did not hit mark default so it submitted also as a webflow form that's fine now let's go ahead and check out our meter so as we can see here one has been saved and it has been saved to the correct member. Now, if I go back here and refresh it again with some other nonsense, enter that in and then check in Stripe again, as we can see, they are all being passed through. So now I'm actually, as I set up in Stripe, being charged for this submission. And that is it. I hope this helped. I hope you can do some super cool things with it. This opened a ton of possibilities for me. We're going to be adding this to a bunch of projects in the future. Hopefully it can become a feature one day in member stack, but for now this works awesome. So anyways, let me know if you have any questions in the comments. I'll talk to you soon and have a great day.